playing. We see Xander Bennett there on the left. Someone who's been in top cut of regionals in the past. A few day two placements just this season. This is his first top cut in quite some time. 2016 Phoenix Regionals top four. That was actually with a, de a favorite deck of mine, mm -hmm. Mega Rayquaza. Me Xander too. and I are, are Mega Rayquaza buddies. So <laughs> <laughs> always love to see Xander doing well at a regional championships. And like we mentioned, he will be playing his Mew VMAX build. Very straightforward, consistent list. It kind of reminds me of uh, Rayquaza VMAX. I mean, you're drawing a lot and you're hitting hard. It's honestly a fair comparison. It feels like the Rayquaza of this format, and especially the way Xander has built it right without the Aerodactyl. It's just really mm. straightforward. It's all gas, no brakes, full steam ahead and force your opponent to find the answer. For sure, we'd be talking about Mew VMAX and what techs you're, you're building. Xander is just no techs, consistency. Consistency wins out. And Austin Charles, we see someone who's not super accomplished, someone who is maybe a little bit new to the stage, right? We saw him in our last round. We talked about how he has not played in a regional championships since back in 2017. He absolutely can now add this top eight finish at a minimum to his accomplishments accolades. For sure. How amazing would it be though that the underdog, Austin Charles, you know, For his sure. first big regional event and it, it, it could be, he, he could be a champion. He could indeed be the champion. Of course, playing that Hisuian Gudra V-Star Wancho going into this matchup. What do you think is important for both of these players? Do you favor one over the other in this spot? And what are the key cards going to be for each of these two players? So I love both the decks very, uh, these are two decks I've played so much. Um, honestly, it's gonna be the Drapion, obviously on Austin's side of the field. He's getting that those three prizes at key moments. So it's, it's essentially you're thinking, you know, I'm gonna get those three no matter what, e eventually. It's 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 getting those first three and you're gonna have to really utilize your your Cramorants, your Gujas, you have to, you have to slow your opponent down, make sure you get those three prizes and then slam down to Drapion. For Xander, again, it's gonna be, you, you're, 350 is not a number you're gonna hit. You just have to accept that, but you have options here. You have Escape Rope and Boss's Orders to reset the Rolling Iron, take out the effect, and possibly take that knockout. And sometimes as well for the Mew player, you can just be more aggressive. You can gust Boss's Orders KO a Gudra V before mm. it has a chance to become a Hisuian Gudra V-Star. Lots at play and lots at stake for both of these players. By making top eight, they have locked up plenty of championship points, tons of booster packs, and a decent amount of cash prizing as well. But each level just increases as you continue on. Here we go, top eight underway. Xander Bennett going first and kicking it off with that Battle VIP pass. Yes, again, Battle VIP pass. You're having a good time. We're gonna have a game here. He's gonna be able to find any two basic Pokemon. Love to see it on the very first turn. I've had to guess, maybe just a couple of Mews or maybe a Mew and a Genesec, but one of those has to be a Mew. Yeah, absolutely wants to get a Mew in play. Of course, Mew does have to take a turn to evolve into Mew V Max so that you can start to launch some cross fusion strikes, copying Techno Blast out into your opponent's side of the field. Xander going to take a moment, checking the prizes now, making sure he knows what he has available. The stakes are as high as they ever have been in these situations, in these games. Austin Charles taking a moment, sitting back in his seat, just watching his opponent's turn unfold. Xander here gonna take a look back at the hand, make sure he knows what he's got. I see a forest seal stone in mm. there. That means there's a lot of potential for this turn. Exactly, exactly. And you don't even have to use the forest seal stone right now. Again, getting the Mew down, getting the Genesect, that seems pretty good. He has the escape rope already in hand. And he could even save the, the Forest Seal Stone maybe for a potential boss's orders play next turn, like you mentioned. I think he's using it right away. Oh. His hand is a little clogged up. He's got a couple double turbo energy in there. So as it stands with the amount of Pokemon he has in play, he wouldn't really be able to get much use out of hmm. Genesect's Fusion Strike system. So it almost forced his hand in this sense. Use this Forest Seal Stone now, grab another VIP pass, get a couple more Pokemon in play. And we can thin down that double turbo energy. We can get a couple Pokemon out and draw some more with these couple of Genesect. And you know what? That's not too bad. Sometimes your Forest Seal Stone is just the fifth copy of Battle VIP Pass in your deck. And uh, you know what? That's, that's pretty good use. You get two more Pokemon. You get to draw a little bit more. And with, again, how Xander really built his deck in just the ultra consistent way, I wouldn't be surprised if he just draws into whatever he needs in any case. Now, you know, it doesn't really need a Forest Seal Stone. And he can still, you know, use Cramomatic potentially. And speaking of that, Cram Nomadic does discard a Rotom Phone, hits a heads <laughs> right away. Battle VIP pass, and we're seeing a triple Mew line here. I think this is Xander being hyper aware of the Drapion on Austin's side of the field. Mm. I think we might be seeing some Psychic Leap plays on some Comfes. 
Exactly, exactly. And something that, uh, something of note as well, he opts to bench the Oricorio instead of something like a third Genesect. I like that play because we do know that Gudra does cap out at 200 damage. Yes. By playing the Oricorio, your Genesects are actually fairly safe. You, you'll, except if the Gudra has a choice belt, for sure. <laughs> Xander could play out that Rotom Phone in his hand, but really doesn't need anything else. His setup here is pretty strong, so... While he would be able to draw any one card off the top five with one more Fusion Strike system, he doesn't really feel the pressure to do so. Austin Charles kicking off his first turn, uses that Flower Selecting to hit a Capture Energy. Does have to send a Temple of Sinnoh to the Lost Zone. That's a card that could potentially come up. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I just have to say here, the lone Confei against this army of basically legendary Pokemon <laughs> looks very intimidating. Yeah. But again, I think they're mythical Pokemon. <laughs> Do, yes. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> mythical Pokemon. But yes, one lone Confei there uh, does find them, uh, does have a capture energy to get some backup there. Temple of Sinnoh getting sent to the Lost Zone, pretty interesting. Again, um, Xander only plays special energies. If you play that Temple of Sinnoh, you essentially shut off double turbo, forcing Xander to find a little bit more, but maybe yep. the other card was a little bit too more, uh, a little bit more important there. I think it was this capture energy, mm -hmm. which he wants to lay down, get some other Pokemon in play. Gonna take a moment, take some notes, make sure he knows exactly what Pokemon are prized. I think initially seeing that Radiant Greninja in the prizes is a little tough. We mm -hmm. saw um, really just in all of these decks that utilize Radiant Greninja, how important it is to a consistent draw power strategy. Exactly. I mean, turning an energy that you're not going to attach anyway into two two fresh cards, that's such a powerful ability. And we've even seen, uh, you know, Gr Radiant Greninja attack. I'm not quite sure if it's going to attack in this matchup in particular, but I'm sure it's something good to have. Uh, it looks like we opt opted for a second Confei, and we're just going to go get that train going with a scoop up net there. Yeah, lots of switching cards here in Austin Charles' opening hand, starting with this other flower selecting. Does see that Hisuian mm. Heavy Ball, so that could be a nice way to grab out Radiant Greninja, but it would come at the cost of Lost Zoning, a Hisuian Gudra V-Star. Is that worth it, Wancho? It should be okay there. Oh, but no, it looks like opting to keep the Hisuian Gudra. Again, we do... They do play three copies. There's none in the prizes. And you, know, you only have two Gudra Vs. I think one of the things that's awkward about it is that it, it's difficult to find the Hisuian mm -hmm. Gudra V-Star, right? There's no Ultra Ball, right? No Evolution Incense. No way to search that Pokemon out. So when you see one hit your hand, you have to almost feel like you need to take it just because you're not guaranteed to find another one for, you know, depending on if you hit into Colrus and can see enough cards. That is a fair point, Chip, as we go ahead and... We're going to see another flower selecting. This is another tough choice. That was this. It was a Temple of Sinnoh or an Energy, and yeah. we've already sent one to the Lost Zone, so we're going to keep this one in hand. Something we have to keep in mind of as well is we have to have stadiums in order to have the Drapion ability activated, right? Yes. We do know uh, Xander plays a path to the peak, and if you if you essentially hit, if you essentially leave the path of the peak activated. Yes, you don't have access to something like Radiant Greninja, but you also don't have access to Drapion's ability to just take that big one-hit knockout. So. Yeah, as tempting as it was to keep that energy, unfortunately, it had to go. So Austin Charles misses out on benching a Hisuian Gudra V on turn one. And I actually almost wonder if that's preferred for Austin Charles. Do you want to wait for a turn where you're attacking with Drapion and benching a Gudra mm. all at the same time, potentially? That wouldn't be too bad for sure. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know what, I wouldn't mind having at least one uh, I wouldn't have, wouldn't mind having the Gudra in play. Something I would love to see as well is just like, getting the Cramorant attack early on. Sure, put on some pressure. Yes, right? exactly. So uh, definitely not the most explosive turn here for Austin, as we do see the escape rope being played. That's the first escape rope there. Yeah, There's big only one card left in the deck. To, a big card to lose here. And Xander also did prize Silene. So mm. normally a card that could allow him to get back some of those switching effects to reset that rolling iron attack of Hisuian Gudra. Sees one going to the discard pile already now. Genesect drawing up to six more cards. Looking for maybe one power tablet to play in order to go for the Psychic Leap. Is that his strategy here? Is that what you think we're going to see? That is a potential. Again, that, there has to be a reason why you bench three Mu V Max, uh, Mu v, three Mu Vs, excuse me, and has to be able. It has to be to be able to copy the Psychic Leap attack. Yeah, you are absolutely correct there. But, I mean, right now, having the Judge and Path, that's not too bad either. Not too bad. You can combine those together. And, hey, Power Tablet is drawn for the turn. I also wonder if maybe Xander wouldn't even feel pressured to play Judge. Austin did not play mm -hmm. a Colrus's Experiment on the last turn. So do you feel pressured to do that? And do you really feel pre pressured to do much? Actually, with this uh, Path to the Peak coming in play, Xander feels confident enough 
to just leave this Mew VMAX out, copying Max Miracle with Cross Fusion Strike. If Austin Charles can find that Drapion V, that would be a perfect response to this exact situation. I don't think he quite has anything in the hand. He's got, again, Flower Sacking going to be very important. Not that, not too important I, cards. This game might be over. Is there <laughs> anything Austin can do? Boss's orders and stall? Boss, I, boss, and maybe play the temple so DTE is also not an out. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, this, I mean, there's no way to get any more Pokemon in this hand right now for Austin <laughs> Charles. I think his literal play is to boss his orders, play the temple like you mentioned, and hope that Xander does not have a way to move Genesect V from the active spot. There's no way to search for Pokemon. No Colrus to draw more cards. There's just nothing Austin can do. <laughs> At the same time, you're thinking, you know, do I, do I even bump? Okay, we are going to bump. Because at the same time, you know, you're stopping your opponent from drawing. But, if, you know, if I was Xander... Okay. Oh. Yeah, Xander okay. would already have it anyway. So I think Austin just recognizes the situation is not good, passes it over, mm. and Xander had the response needed. Uh, that's a quick one, yes. <laughs> Wancho. That was a quick game <laughs> one, huh? I mean, if, if news known for anything are these fast and speedy games, you know, drawing very, very aggressively and really getting those big attacks off. And unfortunately here, Austin just didn't have the the best start again. We didn't see a supporter plate. <laughs> you know, we would love to see no, something yeah. like the Horus Experiment and maybe a couple of other Pokemon bench besides the Confi. Get a train going for sure. But, you know, it's not over yet. That's why we play a best two out of three. And we're going to a game two very, very shortly. Um, again, I don't think Austin really had anything else he could have done in particular. No, yeah, it, it just was just an unfortunate sequence of draws. Maybe there's a room uh, where he could have kept the Hisuian Heavy Ball over that Gudra mm. V-Star, right? Send that Gudra V-Star to the Lost Zone. Take the Heavy Ball, go get that Radiant Greninja yes. that he knew was prized. He knew it was prized because yes. he definitely checked for that Pokemon off of that first initial capture energy and tried to get a couple of draws in. and Because it wouldn't have just drawn him two cards that turn, it would have drawn him two more cards on turn two. And who knows, maybe those two cards are all he needs to find Chorus. Finding Chorus, get some capture energy. Capture energy, gets the Drapion V, mm -hmm. and boom, we're all of a sudden taking three presses and taking the lead in this game. Exactly, maybe sometimes you just have to be in that mindset where you know my opponent's playing extremely fast. Uh, this fast plays deck that draws so many cards. Maybe I just have to keep up pace until that point where I just put that big stop. I put in that big uh, Hisuian Gudra 350 HP and slow it down at that point. But before then, I have to keep up the pace. And Xander Bennett is definitely feeling good after that one as well. I mean, his, his deck functioned pretty nicely. He was able to execute his strategy. Kind of curious he didn't go for that Psychic Leap play. I thought that was what his strategy was going to be. He just felt comfortable going with the Max Miracle and with Austin having sent a Temple to the Lost Zone already, maybe felt like there was a chance his path could stick. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that could have backfired, though. Yeah, 100%. But again, uh, just goes to show he, the mindset Xander was in at that moment. Just It is the most aggressive play. It is the way to just have the most Pokemon, the most uh, amount of cards in play for sure. And he, you know, it was a fairly, fairly slow start there for Austin. Maybe felt a little safe, but definitely could have backfired for sure. Mulligan taken from both players, so now they both have to shuffle in and draw a new hand of seven. Of course, in the Pokemon trading card game, you do need a basic Pokemon in your opening hand to start the game. You always need a Pokemon in your active spot in the Pokemon trading card game. Exactly, exactly. Again, uh, just to talk about it again real quick, I just want to talk about the importance of stadiums in, in this match. Again, every single stadium in both players' deck is going to be is highly, highly, is so valuable. Again, yes. Path of the Peaks shuts off Drapion. Um, the Temple of Sinnoh shuts off the Double Turbo Energies, activates your Drapion. Well, if Drapion, Drapion does get to attack, you do want the Lost City next yes. instead of the Path of the Peak to make sure, because Austin does play Ordinary Rod. You don't want a back-to-back -back Drapion play. Not at all. That would be absolutely a nightmare. Prize cards going out here for both of these players. Nothing too terrible for Xander Bennett. A Genesect V, not ideal. A Path to Peak maybe could be relevant, but for Austin Charles, it's a little awkward. An ordinary round in the prize is also one of his two copies of Hisuian Gudra V. Only Ooh. playing two, a 2-3 lineup in this list. Exactly, and sometimes, you know, if your main attacker, you, if you only have one copy of your main attacker uh, in your deck, I'd be worried too. And immediately Austin is forced with a tough decision. Does only play one Cramorant in this list. Feels like he has to keep it here, and that means sending an Ordinary Rod to the Lost Zone, and Austin does not have another Comfey, does not have a Battle <laughs> VIP Pass, does not have a Hisuian Gudra V. He just does have a, a bunch of for next switching turn. cards. Yeah, has the Colrus <laughs> for next turn, but when you're playing against this matchup, you cannot ever feel like your current hand is one you're going to get to keep. 
<laughs> that is true. And yeah, if I was Austin, not the explosive start I wanted. We saw how fast, how powerful Xander's turn was. Luckily, you know, Xander isn't playing Meloetta, so there's no chance for a turn one, a turn, yeah, turn two knockout. Here. Yeah, Austin's first guaranteed knockout. to at least get <laughs> one more turn, right? Yes. And it's going to be big. What can he do with that one additional turn? Xander Bennett starting things off very nicely. Once again, same way as we did in game one, battle VIP pass starting off the game. Only time you can play this card, but it is so powerful. Getting you two basic Pokemon with a Mew in the active. It looks like two Genesect are being potentially grabbed right away. And I think I even saw another basic Pokemon in Xander Bennett's hand. Yes, not too bad there. That means, again, with more Fusion Strike Pokemon in play, the more you get to draw, the more uh, outs you really do get. And uh, I just have to wonder how, you know what? It's not even a question of, you know, if, is this the only battle VIP pass he's going to be able to play? We've, saw, we've seen him in the earlier round. I think he played three on his first turn. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he did in game one as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, four Sealstone already in the hand. I mean, well, we could we even could see the it. same play. Looks like there's a Cramomatic there as well. I see an Ultra Ball, too. It's, it's tempting here. Ultra Ball, you, you could discard it, thin out your hand and get more Pokemon in play. But at the same time, what do you discard here? Do you, like, losing the Mew VMAX seems a little bit scary. And yeah, no, we're just going to go straight into the another Battle VIP pass. <laughs> yeah, and I think based on the way Xander played out his strategy in game one, we'll probably see Oracorio come down, maybe the second Mew V, potentially a Genesect, as there is one in the prizes. So you're a little less likely to draw into that last Genesect. Mm hmm Maybe no Oricorio for now either. Could wait for Oricorio for a little bit later on. Who is nope. thinking about it though? Yeah, it really does prioritize having that Oricorio, of having access to again not only the damage reduction you mentioned earlier that you know the psychic leap play is pretty big. And what better Pokemon to leap to than a single prize? Yeah, it is true, but it is also interesting because by leaping into Oricorio, you're pretty much offering up Cramorant as a free one mm. prize into the Oricorio. So I almost even wonder if it's worth it at that point. That is true. That is true. But you know, if they're attacking with Cramorant, they're not rolling iron. So Th maybe this you is can... true as well. Yep. There's a lot of lines. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of possibilities. <laughs> but there's only one correct play mm. in the Pokemon TCG. At any given time, you have dozens of possible options. But there's only one that gives you the highest odds chance of winning the game. And that's what separates good players from great ones, being able to identify the correct path turn after turn, action after action mm -hmm. within each turn as well. For sure. And I would trust no one else to know that specific line than here, Xander Bennett or Austin Charles in the top eight people ha that have proven their worth, that they are one of the best of the best. We do and see a few judge now in Xander Bennett's hand. Could be a great time to play it. And it is a little interesting, though, because Austin did not do much on his turn. But it was turn one, so he did not have an opportunity to even play Chorus's experiment. So mm -hmm. do you go for the judge? Knowing Austin has a decent-sized hand, there's a chance he has a Chorus, or do you just leave him with his current hand knowing that he just didn't do too much? I, I would still use the judge. I think just limiting the hand. But, the, but again... Not bad either. You know, he, he didn't play anything at all. I guess the second, uh, second chorus there in hand. And uh, you know, after this turn, I'll judge for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and just a couple cards away from a battle VIP pass. That would have been really great to see. A few different card choices there. One of them being that Hisui and Gudra V. And it is something that Austin's got to put in play at some point in the game. But you have to feel like Xander Bennett has a reasonable chance to gust and KO it before Austin can really do too much. Austin now off of this. Colrus sending a couple cards to the Lost Zone. Looks like it's that Hisui and Gudra V-Star and a Battle VIP pass. Of course, that's an easy choice. Don't mind losing that at this point in the game. Flower selecting will guarantee Austin gets to four this turn. We could see a Spit Innocently attack for free. Yeah, that could be the case here. I mean, they are definitely at the four cards. The, one, the first threshold there for any Lost Zone deck. Um, there, is a, there is a possibility... You, you could even attack maybe with a Drapion. Maybe not the best line, I'm, I'm not saying. But you know, if you attack with a Drapion, technically your Hisuian Gudra on the bench is perfectly safe. Cause that yeah, is and <laughs> I, th I think the threat of this Drapion on turn two for Austin is why Xander puts Oricorio in play and sends up Genesect as well. Oh, because that's fair. it keeps the Genesect out of range of being KO'd. Now, the Mew V's Dark Weakness would still allow that to be KO'd, but I think that's one of the main reasons why Oricorio is solid in this matchup is because it protects Genesect specifically. That is true, that is true. So there is no, it has to be Cramorant. That is the only line that makes sense. And, uh, but again, we have to set up first. 
has to get set up. We see another Comfey in the hand. I think there are a few more switch. Yep, so we can still see another Flower Selecting, getting up to six cards in the loss zone. We're getting close mm -hmm. to a Mirage Gate. Not something Austin should feel super pressured to play this turn specifically. Yeah, that is And I, I also wonder, you know, we talked about it a little in game one, Austin maybe waiting to put Gudra down until he can do it on a turn that Drapion is also attacking. Mm -hmm. Is there merit mm -hmm. to that play? 100%. Again, that, that's, what, that's what I was thinking about this turn, just to keep the Hisuian Gudra safe. I mean, it's one of your main attackers. It's your only Hisuian Gudra, by the way, because yeah. the other one until is Until you Prize. find a heavy ball, right? Yeah, so it, that might be the case there. And um, but no, we're going to see the Suyun Gudra being dropped right now. That's a big, big target there for Xander. Yeah, and I think it may work out for Xander as well. Xander has a six-card hand, mm -hmm. uh, and Austin knows that Xander drew off of one Genesect, but did not draw off the other one. So Xander's hand could be a little clunky. Maybe there's a couple stadiums in there, a couple supporters, and if Xander doesn't specifically have a Switch plus a VMAX plus a boss and a damage modifier, this Gudra is definitely going to be safe. <laughs> but you know what? Hoping Mew doesn't have it, yeah. that, that never feels good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the strongest strategy, I would agree with you. Now, Capture Energy being attached to this Gudra gets not only an energy onto this Pokemon to get it ready to attack in the future, but also fetches another Pokemon from the deck. There are no Quick Ball in this list. The only way to find a basic Pokemon is either with Battle VIP Pass or cards like this Capture Energy. Using it now to get out the Radiant Greninja to get a little bit more card draw going. Does mean it is one less out to find Drapion later on, though. Exactly, exactly. It's it's a very interesting way to build a deck, right? Normally, when you start building a deck, you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to put uh, four Quick Balls first. And then you, then you think about if you have the luxury of being able to use something like an Ultra Ball as well. But Hissi and Gudra, you know, it, it thinks, you know, everything in my deck is just such a resource. I can't, I, I'm, I'm not going to play any Ball Surge besides Hissi and Heavy Ball. <laughs> Radiant Greninja now using concealed cards, drawing two cards, does find the Hisuian Heavy Ball. Mm. That's a pretty good hit because now Austin can put two Hisuian Gudra V into play, so he's guaranteed to be able to have the opportunity to evolve into a V-Star next turn. Exactly. That is a huge grab, in my opinion. So I, feel, I definitely feel a lot safer. Again, we mentioned earlier how there is a huge target on that Hisuian Gudra, but yeah, it can breathe easy because it's sharing the pressure there with a second one. <laughs> we can give some updates on our games happening out in the field. Of course, the rest of our top eight is currently being played. Justin is up one game versus Raymond. Noah up one game versus Lance in that Lugia mirror. And Maxwell up one game versus Grant. So one of our Gudra players already up one game to nothing. Austin Charles, though, on the back foot. Does bench this second Hisuian Gudra V. I think this is an excellent play. And is it worth hitting with the Cramorant? Austin seems to think yes, as Switch is now being played. Cramorant coming into the active. And we're just going to lay some damage down with the Spit innocently. Yes, exactly. Uh, especially since, again, we mentioned earlier the Oracorio's in play. We're essentially two-shotting these Genesects, unless, of course, we can get those Choice Belts. So not a bad play there indeed. We're putting 90 damage on to that Genesect. And something that could even happen is we could eventually gust that Genesect, attack again with a Cramorant when, if we knock out the Oracorio yeah. first. Or even put a Choice Belt on the Cramorant. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Choice belt on Cramorant, that's the play right there. <laughs> hey, if it's what you got to do, it's what you got to do. And speaking of what you got to do, Xander loves to flip ahead on Cramomatic. This really opens up so many potential plays. Escape rope being grabbed instantly, as it will not only force this Cramorant out of the active spot, but also provide Xander the switch that he needs to get his Genesect V to the bench and start attacking with a Mew VMAX. Xander here on this turn. What's he looking for? What's he need? I, I still think you still take down one of the Guja Vs. Uh, again, it's it's an easy two prize, and at this point, you might eat while it's still V, and while you're not expending too much to take that knockout, right? You only need one damage modifier to take this KO, and uh, yeah, that's definitely what I that's definitely what I'd be looking for. Five cards off the top from the Rotom phone. Looking for something like that boss. I don't see it here in this hand. Mew VMAX will be taken. That's at least a card that you know. Once you draw it off of this Fusion Strike system, you'll be able to put it into play immediately, meaning your next Fusion Strike system will be a bit more powerful. The one downside to this strategy that Xander has gone for with the Triple Mew, with the Oracorio, it means you only have two Genesect in play. So you only have a couple of opportunities to draw cards during your turn. Exactly. You're not as fast. You're not as 
you're not drawing as crazy, but at the same time, maybe two is just enough there. Uh, you know, taking the knockout on the Cramrat isn't the end of the world, as you know, we, we do see the judge being played here. It is exerting some sort of pressure and get, you know, it's, it's a Pokemon that attacks for free. You, you, you just want to get it out of play. <laughs> so I think with this line, you missed out on the boss's orders KO. I think Xander is going to want to dig for Path to the Peak. Exactly. Put that in play this turn, and that will do a few things. By leaving Austin with only four cards on Judge, you limit the options with concealed cards on Radiant Greninja. And of course, as well, more importantly, you turn off that wild style ability of the <laughs> Drapion V. Exactly, exactly. And again, he still has access to one more Fusion Strike system draw, as well as these four fresh cards. We're going to have to see what he gets here. Uh, he gets a quick ball. He can still thin out the hand. He could even... Ooh. Oh, never mind. He got it. He has it. <laughs> Just drew the path. <laughs> Pretty casual there, if you ask me. Definitely a great time to use it. Now the question is, is it worth thinning out a card with this quick ball? Maybe not, since you were able to draw into the path. Not an immediate way to bump this path next turn in Xander's hand. Does at least find a judge and a replacement stadium for the next turn. Playing out pretty ideally, if you ask me. Yeah, not too bad there. Especially, you know, you, you already have two Mew VMAX pretty much set up. Anyway, even if the path sticks, even if you're stuck with the path, you, you guarantee that you have back-to-back -back attackers no matter what. That's the beauty of Mew, Mew VMAX having free retreat. Even if you get Technoblast, as long as you have something on the bench, should be uh, should be an easy attack in either way. Looks like, let's see what's in Austin's hand here. He does have energy, he has a Gudra. Cannot use concealed cards Ooh. though. Yep, yeah, cannot okay. use that concealed cards with the path to the peak in play. He does have capture energy in hand, so that is something that is really strong here. We'll be able to use capture energy to get out the Drapion, just needs a Temple of Sinnoh, a Ooh. replacement oh. stadium, and that is pretty nice. Uh, you were getting excited about seeing the Pokey here, but how about that card that followed it up? That course is experiment exactly what yeah. you want to get. Yeah, let's let's just get what we were going to search for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, interesting line here. Do you play the Capture Energy first, then the Drapion out, and bank on hitting the Temple off of this Colrus, or do you play it safe? Oh, well, I think we... I, I would. I, <laughs> well, oh. well, sometimes you just hit them both, so... I'll, I'll hit, hit both and then some. You get, just get, you get the, these three cards. You get two Temple and the Drapion. <laughs> so the three prize turn is incoming. Austin says, okay, yep, I'm definitely taking these two. <laughs> Let's put those to the hand. And we've got to think about what else to do. Attaching to Retreat the Comfey does work out, I think, just fine here. And taking the second Temple seems pretty decent as well. Exactly, exactly. So pretty good Colrus there. Uh, I, I definitely would have uh, used the Colrus first. I, I'm just that type of player. Because uh, <laughs> if you don't get it, that's a Drapion that's just on the yeah. bench sitting there. It's such a big liability if you can't attack. It was definitely the safest play in what Austin decided to go for. Something else that's pretty nice about this spot is he's got two V-Star in his hand. So he can pretty freely mm. evolve both of these Pokemon, giving them a bit more HP for the future as well. Temple of Sidon now coming into play. Drapion V hitting the bench. Can still use concealed cards now that that path has been bumped as well if he would like to. Exactly, exactly. And we do see a couple of evolution there. And that's just, it feels, now that feels like a very intimidating board. Yeah. You have a lot, a lot of cards to deal with. But before you can even think of hitting a Hisuian Guja, you have to deal with a Drapion. Checking through the energy before choosing to discard a card with the concealed cards. It will be the water energy going down, drawing two, maybe looking for a switch. There is a scoop of net and a mirage gate. That's pretty strong. Can, of course, use this capture energy to retreat this active comfey if he would like. Scoop of net works as well, though, and I think this is pretty smart. Use this, use the capture energy maybe on that Hisui and Gudra, get that extra energy attachment so that both of these attackers are just one Mirage Gate away from attacking on the next turn. Exactly. I like using this Mirage Gate right now as well. Sometimes you're thinking, you know, I should, st in, in other Lost Box decks, you, you, you like to keep it in hand. You, you use the Mirage Gate when you're about to attack, but since you, you're thinking, you know what, my. My Gudra should be fairly safe yeah. here. The, the energy is good. It thins out the deck, and it protects you for something like a Judge. And you're definitely betting your opponent has to knock out the Drapion, which is why you would say the Gudra is definitely feeling pretty safe. Capture energy not working, of course, because of that Temple of Sinnoh. And Drapion's wild style ability, letting it use its dynamic tail attack for free. Placing 60 damage somewhere on the board. It looks like Greninja will be the recipient of that. And that is three prize cards for Austin. Coming from a board of uh, being a little behind to now jumping far ahead. Love to see it there. Uh, Austin has the potential to bring it back, but Xander having the right answers specifically yes. to that draft beyond. We, we don't want to deal with it again. We have to send it over to the Lost Zone. And with Lost City, that is definitely possible. 
And we are now officially in Roxanne territory as well. Judge is such a strong disruption card, but Roxanne <laughs> one-ups it. It takes two of the cards your opponent would get off Judge and gives them to you. You get six, your opponent gets two. Of course, you can only use it whenever your opponent has taken at least three prize cards. And as we can see in this instance, that is the case for Austin Charles. Exactly, exactly. And if I, if I had to guess here again, yeah. But it's still just going to be a judge. Roxanne was a possibility. But yeah, judge, again, very, very powerful card. Right. Just, you know, we saw Austin have an absolutely huge hand, especially after taking three cards. Yeah, right. let's shuffle that back in. And with this Rotom Phone, getting one more card off the top of the deck, adding one more piece to the potential combo here, making sure this card <laughs> goes on top and does not get <laughs> added into Xander Bennett's hand. He does have a Mew Max as well that he can put into play. And we're going to see five cards drawn. See what this top card was that he placed on top. It was oh. indeed that Roxanne. Super nice hit. Exactly what he wants to play in this spot. And Austin Charles being left with just two cards as well here. He does have that Gujra powered up at mm -hmm. least, but it's going to be tough. He has a couple of turns to breathe. Sure. And especially since he, the Greninja's ability should be activated, right? Yes. So he, can't, he can't leave it on a path. So he, he has access to potentially concealed cards. And, uh, well, that, that's, that's something to hope for. <laughs> it is definitely something to hope for. And I think Austin's path to victory with three prizes left is something along the lines of Boss KO, Genesect, Boss KO, or a Choreo. It might be a bit to ask for, but Austin is playing three copies of Boss. Also has the few Poke Gear that we've seen so far in this game. So has ways to potentially make that happen. Could also try to two-hit KO MU VMAX, but then you open yourself up to being Psychic Leaped. It's an interesting spot. Ooh, that is a beautiful water energy. He's trying, trying to, <laughs> for sure. He is thankful to see that. Exactly, now Xander exactly. here with a full hand of six off of his own Roxanne. Thinking of thinning some cards out. Looks like a Ultra Ball will discard two of them, bringing the hand size down to three, meaning that this next Genesect can see a couple of more pieces. He's got the damage modifier to knock out the Drapion. Got the Lost City. What else is he looking for? Does he even need anything else this turn, or are we just setting up for the future? Um, this turn, yeah, I believe we're just setting up for the future. We didn't have to use one power tablet. I just, I just want to talk about it. It's, it's, it's a possibility. I like to talk. I like to think of possibilities in Pokemon, but you know, it's not impossible for Mew to hit. 350 damage on a Guja V-Star. It, it involves a couple of heads with Silene, yeah. and maybe five or six power tablets, but it's it's something. It's something you can prepare for, especially if there's only one Guja V-Star really powered up, one threat in play. Quick ball now, discarding Battle VIP Pass, just thinning one more card out. Two cards you don't really want to draw. It is actually kind of interesting because while they are technically cards you don't want to draw, at the same time, they're activators for cards like Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. You want to leave your hand itemless and, you know, not give you access to cram o -matic. But we're just going to take the knockout there, take two prizes as Xander goes down to three. And something I just want to talk about real quick, this might be one of those cases where setting up two Gujra V-Stars is just a huge liability. You know, you're down at three prizes. Yes, the one in the active has 350 effective HP, but you know what? There's another one on the bench. Austin Charles choosing to send up this Comfe, recognizing he needs a bit more than maybe just uh, what his Gujra would provide him, but he top decked Boss's orders. Yeah, so this is one of those cases. Oh, he gets a second energy in any case. Uh, Temple of Sinnoh, you could lose. Uh, Path is still scary. That means you might not have access to something like Moisture Star, mm. but I think the second energy is just too important. One has to go to the Greninja for the concealed cards. Well, one has to be attached. Is there a world where you just attach retreat and don't worry about Greninja? And I think mm. that's what Austin is deciding, recognizing, like you said, that bumping Path to Peak next turn could be vitally important to keep him in this game. That is fair, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. And this is a a huge topic. Boss's orders means you are essentially... Oh, we'll actually put the temple in play here. And this does make some sense. Xander has played quite a few stadium cards. I don't know how many lost vacuum Xander is down. I don't actually think he's down any. So mm -hmm. reasonable chance that this temple comes out of play. But if Austin ever gets it to stick for a turn, I mean, buying a turn in this matchup in these games where games normally last four to five turns max, buying just one single turn is super, super strong. Boss's orders now. Bringing up the Mew V, thinking about what to do. But yeah, brings up Mew V, and that will still be knocked out. It has 180 hit points, even with Oracorio in play. That lesson in Zeal ability does only reduce damage by 20, so it is still 180 damage exactly for the KO. Ooh, what a tight game here. Austin here down to one. Essentially, a gust wins him this match, and we will 
gives him another chance. We'll go into game three from there, but we'll see if Xander has a response. Again, the temp Temple of Sino absolutely huge here. Would have he has the second uh, second double turbo, so he should have the attack regardless. Yeah, yeah, it does have that option, and that actually is kind of interesting because. The second double turbo attached uh, with Temple in play, it doesn't reduce your damage, right? Mm. So now you're dealing 210 base. Does that <laughs> let him reach for a little bit more damage uh, potentially to get to the KO? Are you joining me in the side of five or six power <laughs> tablet chips? I mean, <laughs> hey, there's a world where it could happen. We see a power tablet already in the hand, a Genesect in the hand as well to draw some cards. Now that cross fusion strike. Let's see if he attaches the energy. He does. does. I think we might be going for it, 210. Base damage right now, 240 with the tablet. One more puts you to 270. One more to that 300. I think we do need four modifiers total. We need a belt and three tablets. Belt and four tablets, I mm -hmm. think, actually is the play. Exactly. Or escape rope and boss, potentially. Because now being yep. escape rope and play, there's no more rolling. You will take a prize this turn. You will take a prize. It's, it could be a one prize right now. It could be a two prize. Uh, two prize if you get the boss, if you yeah. do have the boss's orders. You just still need a damage modifier. Now he though. just needs one damage modifier, right? Just needs one choice belt or one more power tablet, and that'll be 270 exactly. Yes, so very, very big here. Ops to play the boss first to try and dig a little bit deeper. The deck is so thin. Odds are he will be able to draw into this. And if this Gudra goes down, Austin needs a big combo of cards next turn. He's going to need Mirage Gate and boss's orders, and he also will need to have enough energy left in the deck, and we're at a point where I'm not sure how many are down at this point. Xander Bennett drawing more cards, looking for a bonifier, does not find it quite yet. Ultra Ball is the draw, though. Can thin this hand down just a little bit more. Mm. Losing the Silene. you've already played your supporter for turn, so if you don't think this game is going to last that much longer, it makes sense to lose that piece. You don't want to put the stadium in play because now your Mew will be doing much more <laughs> reduced damage. That was, a, that was a tough Ultra Ball for sure. Yes. I, I wasn't quite sure what to get rid of, but yeah. We're Last gonna draw. See. Three cards here. Needs a power tablet. There's at least a Cramomatic. I, <laughs> I love that it has to go down here to we go. a Cramomatic. Very important flip. It's either it's the heads. knockout or it's a miss, <laughs> and he hits the heads. Can find the power tablet in order to get this KO. May think of Choice Belt to be a bit stronger in this position. Going to check through his opponent's discard pile, see exactly how many energy are down. Potentially looks like two water in the discard, one on the active, one in the lost zone. Ooh. So that is actually pretty tough for Austin Charles. Looks like Choice Belt now, based off of this information, will be Xander Bennett's decision. Yeah, this is looking like it's just going to run away from Austin again. Despite being in such a commanding position, again, down to one prize, was one boss's orders away from winning a game. Wow. But Gudra could just not take a hit here. Takes the KO. Xander to one prize. Austin to one prize. This game could not be closer. And Austin Charles has a Mirage Gate in hand and a Capture Energy. Capture Energy can be discarded with concealed cards to see a few mm. more. If Austin Charles can find specifically Boss's Orders and Ordinary Rod, he wins game number two. How likely is it, though? Austin seems to think not very for now. Starts Ooh. off by promoting the Comfe. That draw of the Mirage Gate is pretty decent. That, that's essentially potentially a switch card. Here we go. Wow, just Mirage Gate's galore. Mm, neither of these cards are very helpful in this position. You already have two Mirage Gate. You don't need a third. Choice Belt is not going to help you get there. I think it's coming down to yeah. concealed cards, and I think it has to be a specific two card combo can austin charles find the pieces this would <laughs> be one of the, the most absurd of things seat. i've ever seen wancho no. oh. raihan no. does get the extra energy but that is not going to do it austin has the mirage gate has even that pokey gear 3.0 to dig a little bit more for the boss but with no energy cards left in deck, Mirage Gate could not find enough energy to power up this Hisui and Gudra V-Star. I mean, with Raihan, he could be able to find something like the Ordinary Rod to be able to use Mirage Gate, power up the Comfey, and the Gudra have the retreat there. You could buy a turn, assu assuming Xander doesn't have the boss, but hoping that Mew doesn't have a boss. I, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a long shot. Xander would need a switch card and a boss, or a boss and a, another double turbo energy, and a stadium bump as mm -hmm. well. So it is a little bit for Xander to get, but he's sitting on a decent amount of cards. He's got three Genesect in play, as long as he still yes. has the resources available. 
I think Xander has the potential to make it happen. Austin Charles does play the Raihan. It's his yeah. only play left available now. <laughs> One card added to the hand. This Comfey can likely move to the bench with whatever he drew here. Looks like it was that scoop up net. All right, it's going to be a scoop up net picking up the Comfey. And... Yeah, we need to make sure we get one more energy on this. I think there is still a metal in the deck, so Mirage Gate can mm -hmm. find that. We don't want to be missing our energy <laughs> drops here, Austin. There we go. We do have the metal energy, but again, attacking into a VMAX, it's, it's, it's the opposite scenario, right? You, you, you want it to be the uh, one who take hit, to take hits. If Austin maybe could have scoop up net this Greninja as well, if he could have gotten two scoop up mm. nets this turn, that would have been an option for Xander to get through this Hisuian Gujra V-Star, which we know is not going to happen. And Xander places the damage. All he needs is a switch card and a boss's orders. Does he have the pieces? And I see this Mew VMAX already retreating. Or why not two in one with that with, escape yes. rope? Yes. <laughs> and, and there, there we, we go. go. Xander Bennett winning the game, moving on to top four with his Mew VMAX deck. Very, very massively played, Chip. I, I, I can say, you know, you can't see us behind the desk, but we were both at the edge of our seat. We were <laughs> moving closer and closer to the to the screen just because it was such a tight game. You know, it's it's it was literally one turn away, one turn away from being a completely different game altogether. But huge congratulations to Xander Bennett, Bennett to making it to the top four of the Fort Wayne Regional Championship. Yeah, what a finish. Congratulations as well to Austin Charles getting to top eight here, especially after not playing in a regional championships in nearly oh, yes. six years. Are you kidding me? What a finish. What a run with Hasui and Gudra V-Star nonetheless. Yes, what a he, finish. He definitely gets to add something to his Pokemon resume, right? And what better than getting top eight in a w over 1,000 player tournament? I'm impressed. I am very, <laughs> very impressed. Yeah, and honestly, a couple of tough matchups, right? It does feel like a lot of people think that the Lugia matchup is not the best for Gudra. Mm -hmm. The Mew matchup is not the best for Gudra. And Austin made both of those games close uh, th from what we saw for two rounds. Obviously, game one of top eight was not super close, but game two could not have gotten much closer. And he w had a very real shot to win that game as Exactly. Well. The dream was definitely alive. It all If we didn't get to see the full capabilities of Gudra, right? Uh, as a Gudra player, you want to be able to take a hit and heal. If In fact, if that happens at any point in that game where the Gudra got hit by a, tech, by, by a Mew VMAX and was able to Moisture Star, I 100% believe that we would have we would have been able to see a game three there. A couple of